Welcome to our lecture online. At first sight, you may say, well, haven't we done something like this before? And the answer is, well, kind of like that, but not exactly like that, because in this case, the car is also accelerating up the hill. So not only do we need to work to get the car up the hill, we need to overcome friction, which in this case, it's a constant friction force of 70 pounds, and we need to also accelerate going up the hill. And we're supposed to find the power as a function of time. Now, in this example, we're going to uh, solve this problem with imperial units. In the next video, we're going to solve the same problem in standard metric units. You'll see that essentially it makes no difference, but sometimes it helps to clarify things. So how do we go about solving this problem? Well, what we can say is that the amount of work done or the amount of work required is the work required to overcome the, uh, to go up the hill, to, to gain heights, that would be uh, the force to gain height times the distance plus the force to overcome friction, the force to overcome friction times the distance plus the force to accelerate times the distance. So here we go. The total work done is force times distance for three different things. We need to do work to gain height, so we have to push against the mg sine theta. We have to do work to overcome friction, and we have to do work to make the car accelerate. And so definition of work is force times distance, so it's the work to gain height, the work to overcome friction, and the work to, to make the car accelerate. And then, of course, we can divide everything by time. And if we do that, notice that work divided by time is equal to power. And distance divided by time is equal to velocity. So it's the force to gain height times the velocity plus the force of friction times velocity plus the force to, to make the car accelerate times velocity. But now we realize that velocity is not going to be a constant value because the car is accelerating. And notice the car starts with an initial velocity. So we can say that velocity as a function of time is equal to the initial velocity plus the acceleration times time. And of course, this should be A for acceleration. There we go. And notice if we plug in the numbers that this is equal to 20 plus 10 times t, which is the velocity as a function of time. And that's what's going to go into the equation. So what we can do then is we can say that, and of course we can factor out that velocity because it's the same for all three terms. So we can say that power is equal to the force to gain height, which is mg sine of theta, and we don't need parentheses yet, plus the force to overcome friction, which is 70 pounds, plus the force to cause a car to accelerate, which would be the mass times acceleration, and we multiply the whole thing times v, and v is equal to 20 plus 10t, like this. So we factor out a v, which is equal to 20 plus 10t, and then we multiply times the sum of the three forces. Now, mass times acceleration, let's see here. Mass times acceleration is equal to, that would be the weight, 3,200 pounds, divided by, uh, that would be uh, g, which would be 32, well, I'm sorry, I'll take that back. Um, try this again. All right, what I want is I want the mass. The mass is equal to mg divided by g. And mg is 3,200 pounds, and g is 32 feet per second squared, which means that this is equal to 100 slugs. So the British or imperial unit for mass is slugs. Yes, indeed, you heard that correctly, and it's not those little animals in your vegetable garden. We just call them slugs, same name, but a different thing. All right. Now, mass times acceleration would be equal to 100 slugs. Multiply times acceleration, which is 10 feet per second squared. And so that would be the force required to make the car accelerate. Plugging all that in here, we get the following. We have power is equal to m times g, which is 3,200, multiply times the sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half, 
plus 70 plus m times a, that would be 100 times 10 or 1,000, like this, and then all that multiplied times 20 plus 10t. And finally, that would be 1 half times 3,200 is 1,600, 2,600, 2,670. So now we can say that, if we come up here, that the power is equal to 2,670 times... 20 plus 10 t, and that would be the power as a function of time. And that would then be the final answer. The power required to drive that car uphill would be 2670 times 20 plus 10 t. Now, what would be the units? The units in this case would be, hmm, power would be foot pounds. Does that make sense? Well, it should, because m times a, this would be in pounds, so that would be, so it would be pounds, and this would be velocity over time, so that's right. So the units are foot-pounds per second, right? So the units for power, the units for power, would be equal to the units for work over time, and work would be equal to foot-pounds over time, which is seconds, and notice, that the unit for this, that's a force, m times a, which is force, that would be pounds, and this would be velocity, so pounds times velocity, so it would be pounds times feet per second, and so the units are indeed correct. So this is how we find the power required to drive a car up a hill, accounting for acceleration, accounting for gaining height, and accounting for overcoming friction, and that is how it's done, at least in imperial units.